let's talk about input and output. Alright, we found this back in Zelda once more, and in this tutorial, we're going to be talking about input and output. So we're finally going to be doing some very interesting things, and that is going to be outputting things into the console. And then you will also be able to write stuff into the console and actually use it inside of your program. It's going to be very interesting stuff. So let's first of all start out with basically printing out a string. So basically a string, we've seen this previously, and we can print those out very easily. And the way to print anything out is to write system.out.println. You can see it right here. And if I were to autocomplete this with the tab key inside, you can see that actually a parentheses over here automatically get created as well as the ending semicolon. And inside of those parentheses, I can now write a string. Once again, if I write the first quotation marks, then the second one generated automatically. So this is where the program just helps you a lot. You sometimes have to get used to it a little bit when it sort of generates stuff automatically. But I'm telling you, you will get used to it in no time. And then, for example, here we can write something in. Hello, I am Calvin Joel, and this is a Java introduction for Minecraft modding. We can write this, and if I were to now once again run over here at the top right corner or with the run button right here, and then click run main, then you can see, hello, I am Calvin Joel, and this is a Java introduction for Minecraft modding. Absolutely freaking fantastic. So we have now output a string. However, we can also output variables. So we think back to variables. So, for example, we can have an integer variable called life and that's going to be equal to 42. So to to go back, what have we done here? We have initialized the life variable over here, which is of data type integer to the variable 42. And now we want to say once again, a system and you can see when it suggests something to you, the top thing is going to be taken when you hit the tab key. So you can hit a tab. I can then say system dot out and you can see out is the first thing that it suggests so i just hit the tab key and it automatically writes it out and i can hit the dot again right and it's saying print ln and i can hit the tab key again and it basically auto completes everything that i need and then inside of the parentheses once again i can just write life over here which is the name of our variable and now I'm outputting this. Now, what is this going to output? Is it going to output the name of the variable? Is it going to output integer? No. When you output a variable like this, then it's going to output the value of the variable. So if I were to do this, then you can see I'm writing in 42. That's pretty cool. But it doesn't stop there. Let's say what we have is we have an integer grade over here. That's, let's say, 80, right? So we've gotten 80% on the test. That is pretty good. I'm actually quite happy with that. And let's say we now want to output this. So once again, we start writing system tab to autocomplete that dot out tab to autocomplete that dot print ln tab to autocomplete. And inside of this, we can now write your grade is... And then after the second quotation mark, I can, write, I can write a plus and then put in the variable name grade over here. And you can see it's totally fine with that. Like it's not even a batting an eye. And what that is going to do is, well, actually pretty cool. It's going to output your grade is 80. So it's first going to output the string that we've defined right here and then the value of our variable. Pretty freaking cool. Please also note that I did add the space right here. If you do not have this, then it's going to be basically just smushed together over here. So that is why I have a space here at the end of the string. So that's outputting stuff. But what about inputting stuff? So inputting stuff is a little more complicated because we have to write something a little bit more complicated. Basically, I want you to just take this in as this is right now just what we need to write for input, right? So we're going to have to write a specific line and you're just going to be like, okay, that line. And if I do this afterwards, then I will be able to input something. That's all you need to do know for the time being, because once again, we want to reduce as much complexity in the beginning as is possible. Because if I throw out all of the vocabulary that you would need to fully understand this, then you would immediately shut off the vi video because it's it would be too much. So in this case, we want to start writing in a scanner and you can see it actually suggests this to us from the java.util over here. And if I now press the tab key, what you will find is that at the very top over here, you get this import. That's very interesting indeed. So we're basically importing something. We're importing the scanner and able to scan something from the console so that we basically are able to import something. If for some reason this input does not happen, then your scanner might be red over here. And what you can do is you can click on this, press Alt and Enter, and it's then going to import this. So you can basically just double check if there's any issue with your scanner, does it have this import over here for java.util.scanner? Once again, casing is very important. This is a scanner with an uppercase S that is very important with a lowercase S is what we're going to write now because this is 
or more or less also a variable, right? Just of data type scanner, quote unquote. What that means, we'll not worry about that as of right now, but we now have a scanner variable and that's going to be equal to new. And then once again, it suggests the scanner over here to us so we can hit the tab key to autocomplete this. And this time inside of the parentheses, we want to say system.in. And of course, end this line with a semicolon. So this is basically what you have to write in order to input something. It might look very complicated. But once again, all of these different things, right? What is new over here? Why are we putting in a system inside of these parentheses? What is all of this craziness? This will all get revealed throughout the tutorial series. Right now, this is just what we need for input. And to input something, for example, we can have a integer number over here. So there's going to be a integer variable once again. And this time we're going to say equals to the scanner over here dot next int. So you can see it's very important that this is written correctly, right? So next and then in the I here is uppercase. And there you go. And this is basically going to read in whatever you write and save it in this number variable. And that's actually what's going to happen. And we can even check this. If we were to once again write system out print line, right? So print ln, and we're going to say you just typed. And of course, because we are, we know that we can output variables, we can just put in the number over here, and then it's going to output that number. So if we were to now start this, the first thing it's going to happen is it's go actually going to wait until we input something. So for example, we can input 42. And if I now hit enter, you can see it says you just typed 42. So we have just interacted with our program for the first time, which is pretty freaking exciting, actually. But one thing that is quite important is that because we're using this next integer over here, one thing that you might ask yourself is, well, wait a second. It doesn't stop me from not typing in, you know, a word, right? I can just type in count control. What is going to happen if I were to send this? Well, it's going to throw a big red arrow over here because, of course, it is expecting an integer. Now, most of the time, especially in Minecraft modding, this is not going to be too much of an issue because direct input is really not something that you have to account for, you know, things like this, where it's expecting an integer. But in general, when you're expecting input from a user, it is always the best case to limit it in some way. You've probably seen certain things break when you have certain forms, right? And you want to put in a name, but it says age, and then it says, oh, only numbers can be put into this field, right? That's basically one way to check what is being input. So here, this has to be a number, right? Very important that this is a proper number. Otherwise, it's going to throw an error. But of course, you could also input a string. So let's make a string variable here for input. And that's just going to be equal to scanner.next in this case. So you can see, scanner.next. That's just going to read the next thing that we're going to put into the console. And once again, I can just print this out as well. So print line and I can say you now just typed and then I'm just going to say this was a string, right? Because in this case, it was a string. And then we just want to take input over here, of course, and the line with a semicolon. So what we can do now is we can, for example, write in a number over here and then write in countmjo, for example, let's say there you go, countmjo. And then you can see you just typed Kalpenjol. So that's pretty cool. If we were to do this again, and let's say, for example, I liked the video, right? So maybe that's hopefully also true. If I were to put this in, you can see now it only sees I over here. That is very strange. Why would this be the case? Because next only reads everything until the first space. So if you want the entire line, you will need to use next line. However, there's a very interesting thing that happens because we're currently first reading in a, an integer. And then we're reading a line. If I were to do this, right, and I, you know, once again, type in a, in a number and see all of a sudden, wait, now it's just stopping the program in its entirety. And I didn't even type anything in here. That is because there is a weird interaction with the order of things that we're doing. So basically, we're saying first next integer, and then it's sort of consuming our enter press as the next line. So if this ever happens in any one of your programs, you can simply add another next line call before it. You don't have to always do this. It's just because the next integer came before. And as I've said, this is sort of where a little bit of complexity gets added, right? There are certain times when you need to do certain things. So in this case, right now I can write 69 and now I can write, I really like this video and I even subscribed. And if I do this, all of a sudden you can see it read it in perfectly, even with the ending space over here that I've added. Absolutely freaking fantastic. So these are some examples for outputs and inputs. You can, of course, always play around with this. I highly recommend you do so because that's basically going to give you a lot of information as well. 
And don't you worry, we're going to be using the inputs over here quite a few times in the next coming tutorials, including, for example, the custom exercises that we're going to be doing a little bit. That's going to be pretty cool. But first of all, next time we're going to be talking about integers and math. Actually quite important. Hope to see you there. So, yeah.